if you are a first or second year MBA student and you are watching this video and you are wanting to prepare for the USMLE, this video is technically golden for you. I wish I had such a video before I started my preparation. I will talk about all the various resources that are out there subject wise and system wise so that you don't have to worry about it. At the end of this video, you will have a basic understanding of all the resources and whether or not you want to use them or not. Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In case you are new here, hi, I am Ritwik. I am a fourth year MBA student at AIM Jodhpur and I gave my USMLE step one three weeks ago and I am pretty satisfied with my score. So I thought why not share my two cents that might help you guys. So I gave my USMLE step one at the beginning of eighth semester of my med school and on 24th of January. I will be making much more content related to the USMLE. So if you are interested, you might want to subscribe to my channel. So the preparation resources and tips will not change even if you are watching this video after the step one has transitioned into a pass fail system from a numerical three digit score based system. Because the resources are entirely similar, the exam pattern has not changed. Yes, you might not receive your score, but the entire system is still very similar. General overview of step one examination. Step one is the first examination in the series of step board examinations in order to become a licensed physician in the United States. If you want to know briefly all the steps that are involved in USMLE, so I have made an entirely separate video on it. I'll make sure to link it in the description box down below. Anyway, step one is an eight hour long examination which tests your understanding of the first two years of your med school curriculum. The subjects tested are anatomy, physiology, biochemistry. These three are your first year MBA subjects. Then you have pathology, pharmacology, microbiology, and some ethics. These are your second year subjects. Plus you have some psychiatry, some dermatology, some ophthalmology, and some biostatistics also. Students typically take step one in the third year of their med school curriculum if they have decided early on that they want to pursue their residency in the US or also during your internship periods, you can take step one. It honestly doesn't matter from the eligibility point of view. Basic layout of resources. Okay, so basically the gold standard resources for step one are summarized as UFAPS, which stands for U stands for U World, FA stands for First Aid, P stands for Pathoma and S stands for Sketchy. So basically there is one thing that I want to clearly state before starting out, which is that what worked for me might not work for you and what works for you might not work for someone else. So it is empirical that you have a look at all the different resources and choose the best ones for you. You'll have to divide basically all the resources into two major criteria. One is for learning the content and the second one is for testing out your concepts. So in the first one, we have textbooks, we have video lecture series, we have some notes. And in the second category, we have some practice tests, some MCQ banks and also some mock tests. Don't worry, I'll try and explain everything to you. Also, there is this one study technique which is called space repetition by using the app called Anki. I am a huge advocate of Anki, but there is this huge controversy around using Anki. I will not explain about Anki in this particular video. I will try and make a separate video on space repetition and how to use Anki in your MBA series. Learning content. So this section is particularly for different resources that you have for learning your content. The most important ones are First, we have Boards and Beyond. In short, known as BNB, this is an amazing resource that I personally use so I can vouch for it. These are basically video lecture series by a US cardiologist named Dr. Jason Ryan. He did an amazing job. He summarized each and every concept of first aid into small video lecture series with the help of some PowerPoint presentation and some PDFs. And the way that he explains those concepts written in first aid is absolutely marvelous. I have personally used BNB right from the first day of my preparation till the very last so I can vouch for it. And the alternatives to Boards and Beyond are either Kaplan or Lecturio. I personally use Boards and Beyond so I know that Boards and Beyond work the best for me and I'm sure it might work the best for you also. So I'll just hop on my laptop and I'll show you the actual interface of Boards and Beyond. So you can see here that these are the various systems that he discusses. So if I go here into just say gastroenterology, you can see that these are different subcategories and say just if I just want to go into this one, you have all those video lectures which correspond to the first year textbooks. He simplifies the concepts to a certain extent which make memorizing and basically learning the entire first aid a bit more easier and all those video lectures are a bit more palatable as compared to road just learning from the first aid textbook. Next we have first aid textbook. This is the bible for step one. I know this is cliche but it is what it is. What most people miss is that they learn using first aid. So basically understand this that first aid is a review textbook. It is not your primary resource it has to be supplemented by using some video lectures. So my combination was first I'd watch a lecture of BNB and I'd annotate my first year textbook if I had to annotate some extra points that Dr. Jason Ryan explained there. Next what will happen is that I'll basically go through the entire first year textbook of that particular content. See if I'm watching a lecture on say pneumothorax. So I'll just open up the corresponding page on first year and after watching the particular video from Boats and Beyond, I would just go through this particular page on pneumothorax and I would try and memorize this entire page. 
but as i've said before you can learn from any resource you want be it some textbook be it your mbbs notes that you made during your areas of curriculum or even use a video lecture series that's what i did so basically first aid textbook is a very very summarized textbook and it has some amazing mnemonics that help you along the way in memorizing some road examples and some road symptoms and some road pharmacological drugs also i'll show you my first aid textbook so here i have with me my first aid textbook as you can see this is the book that i was talking about and i basically annotated the hell out of this book as you can see this is just a random page that i can show it to you guys this is annotated very very much I don't know if you can see this, but this is very annotated. So my advice to the people watching this for USMLE really Step 1 is that read this book cover to cover at least two to three times before you go and sit for examination. So next, moving on to Pathoma. As the name suggests, this is a textbook for pathology and this is a resource for pathology. According to me, Pathoma was the best resource for pathology that I personally used. There are many out there, but I personally stuck with Pathoma and it really worked for me. It is basically a series of PDF video lectures just like Boats and Beyond, but it is by a pathologist named Dr. Hussain Sattar. Pathoma was the single best resource for pathology in my opinion. I'll show it to you guys that he also has a textbook for pathology, which I have right here. So this is a textbook that comes along with the subscription and basically this is entirely similar to whatever he's teaching on his video lecture series and that is it the first three chapters for Pathoma are considered to be absolute gold standard the first three chapters i think the first one is on cellular adaptation the second one is on inflammation and the third one is on neoplasia i personally revised those first three chapters just a day before my examination and i can assure you that many questions came just from those particular three chapters from Pathoma so my take on how to use Pathoma is that if you are in second year of MBBS, you should complete one solid pass of Pathoma alongside your regular college lectures. But if you are in any other year of medical school curriculum, it does not matter. So my take is to start with both and beyond first aid, complete one particular system from BNB, and then on the last day of that system, read through Pathoma once or watch the video lectures at a 2x speed at least once. And also if you know pathology from both and beyond and first aid, Pathoma is going to be a cake for you in the end of that one particular system. Next moving on, we have Sketchy. Okay, so what if I told you that you have this one amazing resource by which you can memorize entire microbiology and pharmacology that is relevant for USMLE Step 1? Sounds amazing, right? That is what Sketchy did to me. Sketchy, according to me, was the single best resource for Step 1 that I personally used. It was essential and I don't see any other way from which I could have memorized microbiology and pharmacology for Step 1. See, microbiology, as we all know, is extensive and brutal. So what Sketchy does is that it converts the particular details of any microorganism into a beautiful sketch wherein there are various characters and each character represents only one single thing. So if I see somewhere, uh, say a catalase test, so what basically catalase stands for in Sketchy is that it is represented by a particular cat. And if I see that cat in any of the video lecture series, I know that this particular microorganism is catalase test positive. Catalase test is a particular test in microbiology. So if I see that particular cat in any of the various sketchy videos, I can confidently say that this particular microorganism is catalase test positive. That is how it works. I know it sounds ridiculous and stupid, but honestly speaking, this worked for me and this has worked for many of the students who have taken step one. I use sketchy for microbiology and pharmacology. I have seen people using Sketchy only for micro and skipping the pharmacology section. It was an absolute no-brainer for me to use Sketchy pharmacology because I don't see any other way to memorize all of the entire drugs, their mechanism of actions, their uses, their side effects and all those things. I guess they have Sketchy for pathology and biochemistry too. I did not use pathology and biochemistry Sketchy so I cannot vouch for it. But pharmacology and microbiology were absolute no-brainer. It is very important to use Sketchy. And please do not skip on Sketchy pharmacology. I'm repeating this point because I know that you will gain a lot from it. Okay, so there are like 100 plus sketches in pharmacology and also 100 plus sketches in microbiology. So what I would advise you guys is to start early in your preparation because by the time your exam comes, you are already a sketchy master. And one more point that I want to emphasize is that sketchy works amazing if you're using sketchy alongside Anki. Anki reinforces those sketches and reinforces those particular details into long-term memory and long-term retention. So I personally use sketchy with Anki and it worked wonders for me. Next, moving on to a similar resource which also uses visual mnemonics in aiding long-term memory retention is named Pixorize. People preferably use Pixorize for biochemistry and immunology over pharmacology and microbiology. So my take on Pixorize is that no doubt it is, a, it is an amazing resource and it has benefited many step takers in the past. According to me, Sketchy is a bit more superior when it comes to microbiology and pharmacology. And also in terms of the mnemonics and the quality of the visual mnemonics used in Sketchy, it is a bit more superior. That is what I feel. 
but again there are a few videos in pixelized which were absolutely gold for me so if i remember correctly it was the lysosomal storage disorders and also the glycogen storage disorders in biochemistry and also peroxisomal storage disorders yeah these three topics are particularly was from pixelized i have watched these three particular lessons from pixelized and i can vouch for them rest all i don't know about pixelized are you sketchy so what i would advise you guys is to not just blatantly kick out pixelized but to use sketchy and pixelized together and see which one works best for you testing content okay so once you have memorized the entire thing and you have gone through the first year textbooks you have uh, you have completed your boards and your lectures and you have also watched pathama months now it is time to start solving some mcqs and see how the exam tests you on those particular concepts so testing is done via two major types of resources one you have the q banks and the next ones you have those practice tests and mock tests first let's talk about some q banks starting with we have uworld so this is undoubtedly the best resource or the best kind of q bank for step 1 for step 2 and also for step 3 the explanations are crystal clear the tables and diagrams are mind blowing and also the questions are very up to the mark i would advise you to get started with uworld as soon as you can now there are two ways to solve any q bank the first one is tutor mode and the second one is exam mode So what happens in tutor mode is that as soon as you submit the answer to a particular question, you will see the right answer right away, and you'll have the explanation underneath that particular question. What happens in exam mode is that you won't see the answer to the questions until and unless you have submitted the entire block thing. I would suggest you to start with tutor mode early in your preparation because that is when you have to build up the pace. And by the time you are approaching your examination, switch from tutor mode to random and timed mode blocks. Next, moving on to Amboss. This question bank was definitely harder as compared to the real test that I faced and that is what is said by each and everybody who uses Amboss but it also depends on you and your caliber when it comes to solving questions some people might find Amboss easier but majority of people find Amboss harder when it comes to USMB step 1 I did only about 20% of Amboss I wanted to complete it but I personally lacked some time next moving on we have the USMLE RX Q bank this Q bank is created by the authors of the first year textbook and i guess it is on the easier side of the spectrum when it comes to the three various q banks for step 1 so again the spectrum is the hardest one is amboss the easiest one is usmle rx and somewhere in between lies u world next moving on to practice tests these are supposed to be used towards the end of your preparations in an exam simulated environment i would suggest you to give at least one practice test per week in your dedicated period and at least to one practice test before starting out a dedicated period so as to just check where you stand the practice tests most commonly used are either nbmes or u world self assessments or free 120 nbmes cost 60 us dollars per mock test and there are about 6 of them on the site right now from nbme from 25 to form 30 i gave 5 nbmes from form 26 to form 30 I skipped the form 25 and I also gave both the UWSA that came along with my UWL subscription that were UWSA 1 and SA 2. UWSA is kind of over predict your score but that is again relative. For example, UWSA 2 is known to be ridiculously biochemistry and genetics heavy. So if biochem and genetics are a strong point, definitely will score more on UWSA 2 cuz biochemistry and genetics are being tested heavily. But if you are on the other side of the spectrum and biochemistry and genetics gave you a really hard time, will definitely score less as compared to the real deal i guess i've covered majority of the usmle step 1 resources that you will use now there are a few youtube channels that have done an amazing job in basically summarizing the contents either providing some mnemonics or having some ridiculously explainable videos i'll try and explain those channels to you guys first we have dirty medicine oh my god this channel was a life saver and when i say life saver i mean it this channel has some of the best mnemonics that i've seen for step 1 and they honestly work 100% of the time so the mnemonics are stupid and funny at times and that is why they stick with you for a longer period of time i still remember the neurocutaneous syndromes so there is this one table in first year that you have to memorize inside out and that one page is full of information and for answering question you have to know majority of things that are on that particular table and that particular video by dirty medicine was an absolute no brainer for me to watch next we have dr randy nail so the guy behind this channel is actually a psychiatrist in the us and he goes over a few topics like biochemistry genetics communications ethics and biostats and honestly i'll advise you to watch his videos on biostats and ethics they help me a lot next we have prerag juthani So this dude is basically an MD MBA student at Yale University. He has completed his math school and he scored a 250 plus on step 1 and a 250 plus on step 2 also. Anyway, he makes videos about USMLE and the match in general and also about the resource called Anki. 
So if you want to use Anki, I would highly request you to watch his particular videos. The explanations about Anki on his channel are absolutely crystal clear and they help me a lot. I guess this sums it up and I hope this video helped you in narrowing down all of the various resources that you want to use into some of the best ones that are available for you. And before I end this video, I just wanted to say that this exam is not super hard and nor it is like super mind blowing thing. So this exam tests your endurance straight for 8 hours and 8 hours for any examination is a very very long time. So by the time I had finished 5 blocks, and I was like maybe about five and a half hours into the examination, I was not able to think straight because my mind was being clouded by all this information. And also I started feeling like a bit more fatigued. And so that is why the last two blocks were a nightmare for me. And also you honestly feel burnt out by the end of eight hours. And that is a really, really long time. So this exam is an absolute beast in my opinion. And I'm happy to be done with it. And because step one is now transitioned into a pass or fail system, I'm sure step two will be given a bit more emphasis. I'd say not just a bit more, but the entire emphasis will be on step two now because everybody will pass in step one. And what your marks for step two behold, that is something that will give you an entire match. But again, step scores are not everything, although they do mean a lot, but they're not everything. You have to understand this thing, that step scores are just a part of your CV. And you have to be excellent in research, you have to be excellent in extracurriculars, you have to be excellent in sports, you have to be excellent in basically everything. And one thing that you should always keep in mind when studying for these examinations is that, particularly for US MLE, step scores are not everything. Your CV has to be holistic. And if you are only academically excel, it will give you a bit more headache because you won't have anything else to write in your CV. The program directors want people who are holistic and not somebody who is just academically excel. So anyway, in case you have a doubt regarding step one or step two, Anything that you want to ask, leave a comment down below or shoot me an email at the linked email in the description box. I'll be more than happy to help you out. Thank you so much for watching my videos till the very end. I'll see you guys in the next one.